So here we want to evaluate the integral using substitution first and then using integration by parts. And our integral in this case is the integral of sine of the square root of x dx. All right, so in order to evaluate this integral, what we need to do, as the problem says, is use substitution first, meaning u substitution. And we typically use u substitution to solve integrals that involve composite functions, or functions that have an outside function and an inside function. In this case, we do have a composite function within the integral. We have sine of the square root of x, the outside function is sine, and the inside function is the square root of x. And when we use u substitution, in most cases, we will set the inside function of the composite function equal to u. Now when we do that, we usually want to make sure that the derivative of whatever we set u equal to is also found within the integral. That's typically what we look for when we use u substitution. Now in this case, that's not going to happen, right? If we set u equal to this inside function of the square root of x, we can see pretty quickly that the derivative of that is nowhere else to be found within this integral. And so it might seem that u substitution isn't going to be of any help here, but it is. u substitution is just the first step of our integration process here, because after we use it to rewrite our integral in terms of u, we will then have an integral that is recognizable as an integral that we can solve using integration by parts. And so let's do this. I'm going to let u equal that inside function of the square root of x this function right here. All right, and then the next step is going to be to take the derivative of u with respect to x. But before we do that, I'm first gonna rewrite the square root of x in a different way. The square root of x is the same as x to the one half power. Writing it in this way makes it easier to see how to take the derivative of it using the power rule. Now we can see that the derivative of x to the one half power could be found by multiplying the exponent down and subtracting one from the exponent that is the power rule for derivatives. So what we'll have is du dx, the derivative of u with respect to x, is equal to 1 half times x to the negative 1 half power. We multiplied 1 half down, and we subtracted 1 from the power of 1 half, and 1 half minus 1 is a negative 1 half. Now, what we want to do is solve for du, so I'll multiply both sides by dx, and we'll have du is equal to 1 half times x to the power of negative one-half dx. All right, now at this point, typically in our u substitution process, whatever du is equal to, we need to be able to find that within our integral in order to rewrite it in terms of u. But as I predicted earlier, that's not the case here. We can't find one-half times x to the negative one-half power times dx within this integral. I only see dx. Now that wouldn't be a problem if the only thing we couldn't find was a constant, but since we can't find some function in terms of x in the integral, this is a problem. And so we have to find a way to rewrite this expression into some form that we can use to rewrite this integral in terms of u. And so how can we do that? Well, the first thing I'm going to do is rewrite this expression here a little bit. What we can do is move x to the power of negative one half to the denominator of the expression. That will make the exponent positive. So if we do that, we'll have du is equal to one divided by two times x to the one half power times dx, right? If we move x to the negative one half power to the denominator, then we have one divided by two times x to the positive one half power. That power is now positive, all right? And now what we can do is rewrite x to the one half power to be the square root of x, right? As we said in the beginning, the square root of x is the same as x to the one half power. And so if I rewrite that, I'm just going to erase it right here. We'll have two times the square root of x, and now we can do something pretty interesting. This function of x right here, the square root of x, we know what that's equal to in terms of u, right? We set u equal to the square root of x. So what we can do is rewrite the square root of x with u. So let's do that up here. We will have du is equal to one divided by two times u times dx. All right, we just replaced the square root of x with u because that's what we set it equal to. And now what we can do is multiply both sides of this equation by two u, and that will make it so that all of our parts with u are on one side of the equation and all of our parts with x are on the other side. So if we multiply both sides by two u, we will have two u du is equal to dx. 
And this equation right here, 2u du is equal to dx, is going to allow us to make a substitution in this integral that will rewrite this integral in terms of u. We can replace the square root of x with u and replace dx with 2u du. Everything will now be in terms of u. So let's do that. We will have that this is equal to the integral of sine of u times 2u du. All right, so we replace the square root of x with u, that's what we set it equal to, and we replace dx with 2u du, because that's what we found that that was equal to. And so now we're done using u substitution. The first step in evaluating this integral is now complete. But before we move on to using integration by parts, let's first rewrite this integral a little bit. I'm gonna pull this constant multiple of two out to the front of the integral, and then I'm just gonna reorder the multiplication of sine u and u so that it looks a little bit nicer. So here's what we're going to have. This is equal to two times the integral of u times sine u du. All right, so we pulled that two out front and we just reordered the multiplication of sine u and u. So now we have u times sine of u. All right, now at this point, we're not gonna need most of this work from our u substitution process. I'm going to keep our original substitution. We're still going to need that, but the rest of this work I'm going to remove to make some space. What we need to do now is determine how to integrate this integral right here, u times sine u du. This right here is an integral that we can solve using integration by parts. Integration by parts is particularly useful for integrals that involve a product of two functions where one is algebraic and one is not algebraic. And what I mean by that is an algebraic expression would be like x squared or x, or in this case, u squared or u, because we're working in terms of u. These are examples of algebraic expressions. It's your very basic functions that aren't trig functions, they're not logarithmic functions, they're not exponential functions, and so on. All right, so in this integral, we do have a product of an algebraic part and a non-algebraic part. We have u times a trig function of sine u. So integration by parts will be helpful for solving this integral. All right, and so here's how integration by parts works. The general formula looks like this. The integral of u times dv is equal to u times v minus the integral of v times du. Now in this case, we already used u in our u substitution work, so we don't wanna use u again. That would make things a little bit confusing. So instead of using u in this formula, I'm going to replace it with w. So I'm just going to erase this u, this u, and this u for du, and we'll make it w times dv, w times v, and then we'll have dw. All right, so it's the same formula, we're just using different variables since we already used u in our u substitution process. Okay, so in this formula, the integral of w dv represents our integral right here. What we need to do is choose what w is equal to and choose what dv is equal to. And then we can use those values to rewrite the integral in this form. And this form will most likely give us an integral that we will be able to solve. And so how do we go about choosing what w and dv will be equal to in our integral? Well, typically what we do is we choose what u would be equal to, or in this case, w. w is replacing u in our typical integration by parts formula. And in order to choose u or choose w, it's helpful to remember the following acronym. This acronym right here, LIATE. And what this is, is just a priority list of what you should try setting equal to u, or in this case, setting equal to w. And the priority is from the top down. So if you have a logarithmic part and any of these other parts, you would set the logarithmic part equal to w. All right, so whatever is higher up on the list is what you would typically choose. Okay, so in this case, for this integral, we have an algebraic part and we have a trigonometric part. And so if you look at our priority list here, algebraic comes first, and then we have trig. So what we should do is set w equal to u and then set dv equal to the rest of the integral, sine u du. All right, so let's do that. We'll have that w is equal to u, so I'll underline that, and then dv, that's going to be equal to sine u du, so I'll underline that. All right, so w is equal to u and dv is equal to sine u du. 
And now what we do in order to rewrite our integral in this form is find v and dw. And we find those values by taking the derivative of w with respect to u and integrating dv. So here's what that looks like. We'll take the derivative of w with respect to u that will be equal to one. The derivative of u is just one. u is to the first power. So the derivative is just equal to its coefficient, which is one. And then multiplying both sides by du will give us dw is equal to du. So now we found dw, that's this part right here. Now we need to find v by integrating our equation for dv. So we will integrate dv and that will be equal to the integral of sine u du. Now the integral of dv will just be v, so v will be equal to the integral of sine u du, and the integral of sine is negative cosine. So we will have negative cosine of u. All right, so now we have dw and v. Now we just have to use these values along with w and dv to set up this form of our integral, which is the integration by parts process. Okay, so let's do that. Just remember that this integral is being multiplied by two. So this will be equal to two times these two terms that we're gonna write out. So let's start with w times v. w is u and v is negative cosine u. So we will have u times negative cosine u, and then we're going to subtract, right? We are subtracting the integral of v times dw. So we'll have the integral of v, and v is equal to negative cosine u. So we'll have negative cosine u times dw. And we know that dw is equal to du. So we will have du, all right? And then I'll close that. So now two is being multiplied by both of these terms. These two terms are equal to this integral and this integral is being multiplied by two, so two needs to be multiplied by both of those terms. Okay, so now all we have to do is simplify this term and solve this integral, and we will have the solution to our original integral. All right, so let's work on that next. I'm continuing our work up here. Let's start by multiplying this two through this quantity. We'll have two times u times negative cosine u. That will give us negative two u, times cosine u, okay? And then we'll multiply two by this integral. And notice that we can pull this negative out front and these two negatives will cancel out to become positive. So we'll have two times the positive integral of cosine u du. So we'll have plus two times the integral of cosine u du. All right, now the integral of cosine is sine. So now we'll have that this is equal to negative two times u times cosine u plus two times sine u, and then at this point, we need to add our constant of integration plus c, okay? And so now we're almost done. We have now completely integrated our integral. All that's left to do now is replace u with what we set it equal to, right? We set u equal to the square root of x at the very beginning of this problem, but now what we wanna do to finalize our solution is replace each of these u's with the square root of x. So this u is the square root of x, this u is the square root of x, and this u is the square root of x. And so our final answer is that this is equal to negative two times the square root of x times cosine of the square root of x plus two times sine of the square root of x plus c. This right here is the integral of sine of the square root of x. It is equal to negative two times the square root of x times cosine of the square root of x plus two times sine of the square root of x plus c. Okay, and so with that, that's the end of this problem. If you have any questions, feel free to leave those in the comments. And if you wanna see some more examples of using integration by parts, feel free to check out the video that I have here on the screen. Or if you wanna learn about some other topics in Calculus 2, feel free to check out my playlist that's here on the screen as well with all of my videos in Calculus 2. Okay, but that's all I had for now, so I will see you next time.